welcome to my class once again and this time i shall be taking up john milton's areopagitica i shall be taking this class in two parts in the first part of the lecture i shall be discussing in brief life of milton the social and the political significance of this particular prose pamphlet areopagitica and milton's literary career in brief because all these discussions are directly connected with our understanding of areopagitica we shall try to see in the course of our lecture how great milton was as a political thinker a philosopher and a spokesman for freedom of the mind in my first lecture i shall be referring to some important points of areopagitica briefly and then in the second lecture i shall take up the pamphlet in detail explaining and trying to explore many of its important aspects to begin with i shall be referring to milton's early life and his life at school and university i shall start with a statement that milton was a rebel this statement may seem to be surprising because milton as a young boy was nothing but a voracious reader as if he had all his pleasures in reading as if he was destined to be a great scholar and we all know that he was such a great scholar who knew so many languages including english latin hebrew greek italian french and many others such an outstanding scholar he was and from his childhood people could understand that he was going to be a great scholar when he came to cambridge university he had a difference of opinion with his tutor and milton was not ready to accept anything which he did not think to be right and true therefore the controversy between the student and the teacher continued and as a result of that milton had to face a temporary rustication from the university of course he came back soon and finally he took his degree ma degree from the university of cambridge now after his cambridge education milton embarked on a continental tour in fact 
in those days it was believed that after for after the formal education one should try to know life first hand without which education would not be complete milton had to come back soon because the country was in a crisis it was a political crisis and the parliament and the king charles the 1st were not seeing things eye to eye and finally england was in the grip of a civil war which led to the unfortunate collapse of the monarchy and the assassination of the king for a small stint oliver cromwell hated the democratic government the puritan government and milton was given an important post an important position in the government of cromwell he was secretary of foreign affairs milton's literary career can be divided into three parts in the first part when he was in his school and university and just after his university he was composing some of his early poems and some of these poems had great merit and become very famous also so we can say that of the first of the three phases in milton's career the first phase was devoted to poetry and the second phase of 20 years was devoted to prose in these 20 years milton did not compose poetry but he composed some great prose pamphlets and in the last phase that is in the final phase of milton's life he created his greatest works which included paradise lost paradise regained and his only play samson agonistus so aryopajitike from this discussion we can understand that aryopajitike was composed was written in the second period and uh, why aryopajitike was written what is aryopajitike i shall be discussing aryopajitike in detail but let me tell you briefly that aryopajitike is milton's plea for the freedom of speech for the freedom of thought man must be allowed to think man must be allowed to express his thoughts without any inhibition without any kind of suppression the thoughts of man the thinking faculty of man must not be suppressed so this was milton's plea and as you can see that this pamphlet is relevant even today because the greatness of human being lies in his faculty of thought if man is 
debarred from thinking his human qualities will be lost but what was the occasion why did he compose this pamphlet was there any occasion now there we come to the personal issue of milton so aryopajitike is something which has a personal issue a political issue and of course a philosophical issue now what is the personal issue and for that we have to go back to milton's life once again milton was not a happily married man he did not enjoy a happy married life although he married thrice and his problem started perhaps with his first marriage milton married rather late at his late by the standards of those days a man marrying at 34 now in 2021 well there is nothing astonishing in that but in milton's time 34 was quite an advanced age for marriage and milton married at the age of 34 and the girl whom he married was almost half his age mary powell he married mary powell when the girl was as i said almost half his age but mary powell died and milton married for the second time catherine he married catherine in 1656 mary powell he married mary powell in 1642 in 1656 he married catherine and in 1663 he married his third wife elizabeth but as i said he was never happy from his first marriage he was never happy and his first wife mary powell left him after some time and this was not only a matter of great disgust disgust for milton but it was a matter of great insult for him and milton wrote out a pamphlet on the necessity of divorce now i'll give you the name the name of the pamphlet is the doctrine and discipline of divorce the doctrine and discipline of divorce which was written in 1643 now divorce was something which was quite unthought of in those days well from the social and religious point of view divorce was almost something blasphemous divorce was something unacceptable in social life but john milton was so disgusted that he thought that a man must be given a chance to begin his life when again if his first marriage does not work he must be given a, a second chance and this pamphlet was the cause of much controversy the government itself was perhaps in a fix in the trouble the government had to face uh, well 
displeasure of the people because one who was close to the government in fact one who was closely connected with the government wrote something like that the doctrine and discipline of divorce so how could milton write such a book and how could the government allow someone close to it to write such a book and therefore the government passed a law the law was passed in the same year 14th june 1643 1643 the book doctrine and discipline of divorce was written which was a plea for divorce which was a plea for giving an opportunity to the unhappy man whose first marriage did not work to have an opportunity to start his life anew with a new woman but this was a cause of great controversy controversy uh, even inside the government and this incurred great displeasure from the people in general so the government hastily passed a law june of the same year 14th june 1643 and by this law the system of censoring books was once again initiated no please note my sentence once again initiated which means that this was a system previously also in some previous time there was a system of censoring books now what was it that there should be a committee a committee of experts and the manuscript of each book should be submitted to the committee and the members of the committee would read the manuscript and if they approve only then the book would be printed so without passing the censure committee without obtaining the censure certificate a manuscript would not be allowed to see the light of the day so the fate of the prospective writers and their creations their writings depended on the members of a committee who would decide whether the book was to be printed or not whether the book was worthy to get printed or not milton protested against this and he wrote his areopagitica fair he suggested that no such censoring could be allowed in any civilized society because the human mind must be allowed to work the human mind must be allowed to think the human faculty of thought must not be curtailed so books should be allowed to be written and printed if the books were bad they would be discarded now this was this was not an easy thing to do in those days it was not an easy thing to express your opinion against the authority the imposing authority but milton 
had the courage and the conviction and the expertise and the ingenuity to do that. Now how he did that we shall be discussing that by and by. And well he did that. He protested against the authority and he supported something which he believed to be true that human mind must not be kept in bondage. Human mind must be given a free reign, a free play. Otherwise, the human faculties, all the human faculties would be lost. Now, Milton's revolting spirit and his thinking faculty and of course his philosophical bent of mind all are, are all visible in this great prose pamphlet Ario Pajitike. Now, so in the second phase, that is the middle phase of Milton's life, Milton produced some outstanding prose pamphlets and this is perhaps one of them. At least we can say that this is one of the best prose pamphlets that Milton produced. Now what is Areopagitike? What is the meaning of Areopagitike? That we shall tell you right now. Now Areopagitike, to understand Areopagitike, the meaning of Areopagitike, we have to refer to a great scholar a great scholar of the 5th century, a great Greek scholar of the 5th century. He was Isocrates, I-S-O-C-R-A-T-E-S, -E Isocrates and he addressed the council and the council met on the hill Areopagus and this Isocrates addressed the council that met beside the hill Areopagus and he appealed to the parliament or rather Isocrates tried to persuade the parliament to take up his view and thus Milton was like a modern or rather a neoclassical or rather uh, well a 17th century isocrats and he addressed the parliament to repeal the licensing act. As Isocrates in the 5th century addressed the Greek council that met on the foot of the hill Areopagus to establish his point, Milton did the same in the hall of the Milton uh, did the same uh, in the hall of the parliament to uh, try to persuade the government to repeal the act of licensing or the, the law that 
was imposed upon the prospective writers and books and publishers. Now, well, uh, I'll just uh, point out certain things to you um, before I end this part of the lecture. Uh, so, when, well, uh, let me repeat the Licensing Act, Licensing Act of 1643. So, the Licensing Act of 1653 said that all the books were to re were to be reviewed by a panel of scholars before the publication and uh, Milton was against that and Milton he put before the parliament mainly these points. Point number one, freedom of expression was something which was considered to be of highest value even in ancient civilized societies of Greece and Rome. Freedom of expression was of great value in both Greece and Rome. And therefore, it should be given equal value in England. Second point was that the destruction of the books would be perhaps of greatest harm because destruction of books amounted to the destruction of the mind. And three, temptations cannot be controlled by any extraneous forces. Now, what's the meaning of that? The plea was that Certain books were evil. They were such that, that they spread corruption in the society of men. And such vulgar corruption had the power to destroy a whole generation. So such books must not be allowed to see the light of the day. Now Milton's argument was that evil is a kind of a temptation. Now can we put a stop to temptation by importing forces from outside. Temptation must be counteracted or counterbalanced by forces inside. So books, by banning books, by proscribing books, by disallowing books to get printed, 
it was not possible to put an end to the inner corruption of man. These were the three principal arguments of Milton in Arin Pachitike, where he pleaded for freedom of press, freedom of thought, freedom of mind. The next part of my lecture will be explaining and exploring the other aspects of Arin Pachitike. Thank you. Thank you for the day.